Hey guys, welcome to Sojo Videos. Today, it is the part two to the anime glass painting tutorial I posted a while ago. In this video, not only am I gonna be making another glass painting, but I'm also gonna be answering common questions. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe so you can see more of this content. It really helps out a lot. So make sure to check the description for timestamps if there's a specific question you're looking for. If you guys have any more questions, even after this video, make sure to leave it down in the comments as I try my best to reply to all of them as much as I can and I want to help you guys be able to do this. So for today, I'm actually not going to be painting something from an anime, but instead I'm going to be painting this dream. Because as of lately, block game go burr in head all the time and yep, that's it. That's just all that exists in my life right now. Also, if you don't know, this is dream, very famous Minecraft YouTuber. Instead of the usual glass pane, I'm going to be using this plastic frame thing I got from the dollar store. Hey, look, it's me. So yeah, that's basically what I'm gonna be painting on for today. So starting off with some general questions. First one I wanted to address was how long did this painting actually take me? So for my first glass painting in total, the amount of time actually put into the project was probably three to four hours. I think I worked on it for about a week, but I didn't really work on it every single day. So keep in mind, you also have to wait for paint to dry. And I think it's give or take three to four hours. Also, some people ask me how much did everything cost? It did not cost that much. In total, just a little bit over $10, definitely not more than 15. A lot of this stuff you can actually find pretty good alternatives at the dollar store. I think the only thing that costs a bit would probably be the paint pen. It was about seven-ish dollars, so not that crazy amount, but I think it was a pretty good investment because I've definitely used this in other projects as well. Another question and concern I got was how hard it was to actually do the glass paintings. While I'd like to say it was pretty easy, I think it took a lot of time and effort effort and a lot of patience. Honestly, it really isn't that hard. You just have to make sure to commit and be able to focus on what you're doing and just be as careful as you can. I mean, if you mess up the first time, that's okay. Practice makes perfect. Moving on to materials. One question I got is where did I get my pen? So this is a Sharpie oil-based paint pen in the color black fine point, even though it's actually kind of thick. I got this from Michael's, which is my local arts and crafts store. I think you can also get it online on Amazon. I know some people didn't seem to be able to find this pen. The original pens that I think people were using were Sakura Identa pens, which is a type of permanent marker that doesn't smudge and actually works pretty well. So there's that if you want to get that instead. And some people asked about using Sharpies, but Sharpies seem to smudge last I heard. So I would not recommend using Sharpies. And other people asked about Posca pens. It's kind of an unsure consensus on that. I saw some people in the comments saying Posca pens worked. Some people said they didn't. In general, I'd recommend using, again, a paint pen or the Sakura Identa pen. I saw it on TikTok. Is TikTok reliable? Who knows? Another question about materials I got was where was my glass pane from? In the video, obviously, I had like a singular glass pane, but it was just glass that's found in like a general picture frame, like that kind of picture frame. I, again, got it from Michael's, but it was on sale. If you want a cheaper alternative, Dollar Store works. I mean, this time I'm using a plastic thing instead. And for the last video specifically, I used a four inches by six inches glass frame. And this time I'm going to be using a 10 inches by eight inches plastic frame. Also adding one thing that I forgot to say when I was originally recording is people asked how to hang up their glass paintings. For me, I just bought like these like mini canvas stands that I got from the dollar store. They come in like a bunch of different sizes. A lot of people ask for putting it up on walls. That's a good question. I don't really know. Some people kind of prop it up on their shelves, I guess, but if you want it standing just on its own, I don't know how possible that is. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna talk about using Canva and getting a reference photo for your glass painting. What happens if I don't have a printer? Some alternatives I recommend is drawing your own reference photo or tracing it off of a laptop or iPad screen. Drawing a reference photo might be a bit harder for some people, but I mean, 
if you want to try, you can give it a shot. This is a drawing I did a while back and I'd probably use this as reference. Another question I got was what exactly was the editing program I used to get the reference photo? I used Canva, which is a graphic design tool. You can use any other type of resizing or graphic design online resource, but this is just a free website that is actually really helpful for a lot of different things. Is Canva free? Yes. There is a premium version, but all the stuff that you need to make your reference photo should only be using free resources so you don't need to pay for anything. So next I'm going to talk about sizing the photo. From the last video that I put out, I actually learned a few more things. One is how to figure out the sizing of your painting. So when you go to create a design up here in the corner, you get all of these suggestions and templates that Canva already has, but we're actually going to be using custom size, which is found down here. You click on this, and you're able to set your custom size, that's where you'll just input it in. So for example, for this canvas that I'm gonna be using today, it's 10 inches by eight. So I'm gonna change the units to inches and then basically just put 10 by eight. And then it should create a new design. And so for this time, since I'm not gonna be basing my reference drawing on a anime character, since I traced up my reference photo instead, I went on PixArt and cut out my image. You can also just use the image itself if you save it. Going up to uploads, I already uploaded it. I'm gonna just basically take it and put it onto the canvas. Since this is my actual frame, I can size it how I want it to look and this will be the size in real life. Just to get the rulers and guides that that helps you kind of measure out where everything is. If you don't want your whole picture to take up the whole space of the canvas and you kind of know where you want to put it but you've measured it in real life, you can go to file and show rulers and then go again, file, and then show guides. Here, you actually have a ruler, which is to scale. You're able to see the measurements and what they would be in real life. And then to set guides, it would be right click, and then you can add a horizontal guide, add a vertical guide, and you can use this to kind of match up your drawing a bit better, and it'll snap to where the guide is supposed to be. Also, don't forget to mirror your image and then flip it horizontally so that when you paint it, it's facing the actual side. Some people were asking if they really needed to do this. No, you don't need to, as long as you're okay with the picture looking like this as the final product versus your original photo. Last thing I wanted to address that's related to the reference photos is for the people who don't want to use like an anime or a cartoon as a reference and instead photos or things from real life movies, that kind of stuff. The thing is about glass paintings is that the style of it works really well with anime and cartoons because of the black outline and the way that the color is used. It's not like, you know, real life where there's like shading involved. For people who do want to use photos or real life references, there is a way to do that, which is what I'm going to be showing today with my dream design. I basically searched up the first drawing app tool thing on the app store that wasn't Procreate and used the first result on this old mini iPad that I have. And I used something called Metabang Paint. And then I basically just took the real life photo that I was referencing. I put in his photo as a layer, started a new layer, basically just traced on top of his picture. I would love to do a tutorial on this if I knew what I was doing. I just saw, oh look, brush. Oh look, I can zoom in and trace stuff. Literally, the pen I used was my finger and this like touchpad pen thing that I randomly found in my backpack. This is really scuffed, but hey, listen, it works. This probably works for any other real life reference you wanna use, whether it be pets or friends, that kind of stuff. Basically just outline them in black and kind of make them into like an anime cartoon style, filling in like specific colors for large regions. That should be enough to work with and put on a glass painting. Now let's actually move on to working on that. Shall we? Hello. Hello. So my friend Sima, also known as Kiwim Cook. <laughs> yes, I am Kiwim Cook. Yes, and she is here today to also paint. So this is ours. We outlined already. Look at her cat. It's so cute. She's also gonna help me ask the questions that you guys ask. Sima, what is the first question? Well, Joan. <laughs> How do you mix colors? 
<laughs> okay, basically how I fixed colors was kind of just using my own judgment, but for skin color, I used these two colors as my base, which is Unbleached Titanium and Parchment for this brand. And then I mixed it with this darker tan, yellow och ochre, ochre, o ochre, o ochre, ochre, I don't know, ochre. whatever this is, to make darker skin tones. And then I also used brown to mix it with shadows. The shadows, I'd usually use these two colors, so more gray, more brown, so it's a bit darker, and more tanned areas, I'd use the yellow base. For the rest of the other colors, I mostly had my own acrylics that like, kind of matched with stuff, but just to make them lighter or darker, I'd use white to make them lighter and then either black or brown to make them darker. And I always would do a test patch on like some white paper or like the corner of the glass to just to see what it would look like and then just quickly wipe it off. Next question, Joan, what kind of paint do you use? I use acrylics. Uh, some people ask me if you're able to use any other paints like gouache and oil-based oh, acrylics yeah. or something. I don't know, from what I've seen, Almost everyone that does glass paintings use acrylics and that seems to be what works. So I'd recommend acrylics. Do you paint on the same side that you drew on? Yes. <laughs> yes. When you flip the picture over, it should just be all glass and smooth and nice. I also had some people ask me about getting like air bubbles underneath like after they painted. For me personally, I didn't get that problem. I haven't actually kept any of the paintings I've done. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. One of them's to you, one of them's yeah. to my other friend. Have there been air bubbles on the one no, I gave you? No, it was pretty smooth actually. Okay, so what I try to do to avoid that would just be to put like a thin but even first layer with like a flat-ish brush. Don't put that much on and just kind of paint on it. And then once that's dried, then start layering on your paint. One other tip also, maybe not to get air bubbles, is making sure your paint is a good consistency. Another thing someone brought up was if they could use a blow dryer to like help the paint dry. I'd recommend letting the paint dry fully. Every time I worked on a layer of paint, I would wait till the next day to keep working on it. But a blow dryer works as long as you're careful. Just be careful not to like shift the paint around. And I'm worried that the heat might also make air bubbles. Take that risk if you want to do it. Okay, Joan, do you want to teach us how to paint layers? Sure. I again start off with detailing like smaller parts to paint first. If you're painting like layers on top of each other, make sure that the first layer is like completely dry before painting on the second one, which is why again, I recommend like maybe even waiting a day before starting to work on the next layer. Some people were asking about like painting on top of the paint markers. For that, I'd be careful because I know when I did it, it seemed like some of the marker like not smudged a little, but it just didn't seem like crisp lines. So I just kind of paint around it as much as you can, but it doesn't hurt if you paint on top of it. I'm pretty sure it's fine as long as it's dry. And last but not least, how do you make sure um, you don't chip the paint? You be careful. <laughs> that is literally my answer. I just tried my best not to scratch it after. No, I'm Look at my cute day. <laughs> I'm done the painting. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Just kidding. Done the painting. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, ignore the. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. Listen, listen. Okay, I want to catch it passing a milestone. I haven't done that yet. I am done. This is what it looks like. This is terrible lighting. I speed ran this so hard. I finished this in like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I hope I got to answer most of your guys' common questions. If you have any more questions that I wasn't able to answer in this video or in the comments of the first video, make sure to leave it down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. If you're still seeing this, comment if I should send this to his P.O. box. I don't know. I never keep any of my art, but I also want to send it because I think that's cool. Ah! Uh...